Hi everyone, my name is Kate Goldenring. My name is Yuji Apple. And we're both software engineers at Microsoft working on an open source project called Aukri. And today we're gonna to talk about how you can use Aukri to make IoT devices accessible to your edge Kubernetes clusters. So we'll first start off by talking about the motivation behind Aukri, and then we'll look at an IoT edge scenario and how it can be simplified using Aukri. Then we'll dive into Aukri's architecture and look at one of Aukri's latest enhancements that make it more easily extensible. And finally, we'll talk about how you can get involved. Okay, so a bit of motivation. A uh, typical cloud Kubernetes application has a fixed set of dependencies. These are other cloud services that the application depends on for their functionality, and these services are generally highly available. On the other hand, an edge application depends on variable number of data sources, especially an edge application that does any data processing. Now, these data sources, they might not be highly available because they might be represented by a simple devices such as IP cameras, temperature sensors. Uh, your edge application can also do control such as control of robotic arms. And again, these are not highly available sources. So then the question is, how can your application discover these uh, when, when there is a variable number of them? We, we cannot put these uh, devices to be part of a Kubernetes cluster because many times they are single purpose devices, they have a small footprint, or they have not been certified to run Kubernetes. And so how can your application take a dependency on them? When we looked at this, uh, when we look at this, we couldn't find a standardized way to achieve this. And that's where we came up with Acri. Acri exposes the individual IoT devices into Kubernetes clusters extended resources. This then allows your application to take a dependency on them, similarly like you would do on any GPU, where you can, uh, where you can request uh, access to the extended resource. ACRI itself, is the name is an acronym. It stands for a Kubernetes Resource Interface for the Edge. And it also stands for Edge in Greek. Now, ACRI works in two phases. First, it discovers and advertises the IoT devices to the cluster. It then monitors the availability of those devices to make sure if a device disappears, maybe it's disconnected or starts malfunctioning, it stops advertising it uh, to the cluster. Second, this is an optional piece. You can uh, request Acre to schedule a workload when a new device is discovered. This allows you to dynamically, in a plug and play fashion, schedule your workloads if and only if uh, the devices are available. Now, to achieve this, Acri has an extensibility point called Discovery Handlers. We don't think that any project can handle discovery of all IoT devices. Uh, there is just so many protocols out there. And so the discovery is offloaded to the uh, Discovery Handler. and uh, and you can take a dependency on several discovery handlers that we, uh, ha we have already available with Acre. So we support Onviv for IP cameras, UDEV for locally attached devices, and OPC UA for industrial settings. But you can also bring your own or take a dependence, uh, dependency on any other discovery handler uh, coming from a community. Acre itself is purely open source project. There is no Microsoft hidden source in it. It is released as part of Deus Labs, uh, side by side with other Deus Labs projects such as Helm. Acre has been built uh, in Rust, but it doesn't mean that uh, the uh, device uh, discovery handlers needs to be written in the same language. You can pick any language of your choosing. So now, Let's look at a typical IoT scenario and let's see it, how Acre can help us. Uh, say you're building a smart farm. Uh, you, will, you will care for your crops and for your animals. For your crops, you might want to deploy some soil moisture and pH sensors, some temperature sensors. For your animals, you might want to deploy some IP cameras and microphones to en ensure there are no predators uh, attacking your animals. 
so so in order in order for you to take advantage of all these sensors you need to have some application doing the data processing and so so let's zoom in specifically on the ip camera scenario and see uh, how you could uh, design your application First, we'll go over the scenario without Acrea to see, to understand better the complexity uh, involved. So say you start with, uh, you know, your IP cameras deployed and you need to deploy the application during the processing. We'll take a simple microservices based architecture where we have a frame server pod running for every camera. It's processing the RTSP stream, extracting individual frames and passing it onto the inferencing which takes advantage of a GPU and an ML model to discover any predator. And when a predator is found, it sends an alert. Uh, it's all great, except for the fact that we are running on a farm, not in a data center. And so we might not have the connectivity uh, and the bandwidth necessary to push uh, full video streams or multiple video streams into the cloud. And so instead, uh, the data attracts compute uh, data gravity, so so we can deploy the Kubernetes cluster onto the edge. It's a simple a Kubernetes cluster to begin with, uh, with a single GPU. We have our alerting pod running in the clusters, and that's okay because that, that produces a low bandwidth stream of data that we can push onto cloud for additional processing. Uh, for fun, we'll also keep track of how many uh, steps an operator needs to do to provision all the PCs uh, uh, into the edge cluster for your application. So we have the IP cameras and in the microservice fashion, we will deploy the frame server pod per camera and we have to manually provision the configuration, the connection string uh, so that the frame server can start pulling frames from uh, its assigned camera. Once we have that, we need to provision uh, an inferencing uh, pod with a ML model and attach it to a GPU so that we can start doing processing. This inferencing pod needs to understand what are all the frame server pods assigned to it, so it can pull the frames and start processing them. And then when, when the processing is complete uh, and a predator is discovered, we send an alert the same way as we did in the, in the cloud time. Now, what happens if a, pod, uh, if a camera goes down? So maybe say it goes disconnected or it's malfunctioning. Well, now you have a frame server pod sitting in your cluster and either idling or it just keeps restarting. That's not great, just consuming resources. So you might need to send an operator to go and uh, disk, uh, remove it from, from your cluster. Next, say you want to scale. Well, now you need to again go schedule multiple frames server pods, provision them individually with the connection string to the cameras so that they can pull uh, the individual frames. Uh, say you want to scale your cluster. Okay, you deploy a new node. You need to again go and manually deploy the inferencing pod to take advantage of the other GPU. Uh, what if any node goes down? Well, maybe you repartitioned, maybe you repartitioned uh, you will need to repartition which frame server pod goes to uh, our process on which uh, GPU. And so there's a lot of manual steps you kind of have to go along the way in order to create an application that can react to changes in the physical environment surrounding the cluster. And so let's see how we can simplify this flow with Acri. We'll start with the same set of cameras, we'll deploy the same Kubernetes cluster, but, but we're going to deploy Acri onto this cluster. That's the green box. Kate will later show us what are the uh, pieces of Acri, but for now, let's focus on high level. So with Acri in place, instead of manually deploying the frame server pods, we'll deploy uh, Acri configuration. This is a custom resource, which allows you to declaratively state what are the devices you want to expose into your cluster. It's composed of two main pieces. So first, we request a discovery handler. Uh, we are using here on with to discover IP cameras. In practice, there would be additional configurations such as filters. And then second, you specify in, for the plug and play part, you specify the broker you want to deploy uh, that will take an advent, uh, that will expose the device into the cluster. Now, in our case, that's the frame server pod. This broker will be automatically provisioned with the configuration uh, to access the individual cameras. In our case, it's a RTSP URL. Furthermore, Acri also deploys a service that's the blue box sitting behind the frame server pods. 
And this aggregates and load balances across all broker pods that are deployed on behalf of single ACRI configuration. And this allows us to access all the frame server pods in a uniform fashion. Next, we need to take advantage of the GPU. We need to do the inferencing. So similarly, we can use ACRI, in this case, our UDEV discovery handler to detect the GPU. And when a GPU is detected, deploy the inferencing pod. Now, in this case, say again, uh, if any camera goes down, that's okay. Acri will discover that the device is no longer available and it will automatically evict the frame server pod. If you want to scale, all we need to do is we just connect the IP cameras. Acri will automatically discover them, provision the frame server pods, configure them correctly, and our inferencing solution uh, didn't have, our application didn't have to be changed in any way on, from the operator side. Uh, we want to scale the cluster. We add a new node. Uh, Acre will automatically detect it because we have provided the GPU configuration, deploy new inferencing pod, and again, application scaled in completely Kubernetes native way without the operator having to go and make changes based on the changes that happen in the physical environment surrounding the cluster. So with that, I'll transition over to Kate, who's going to walk us through uh, the details of the green box. Awesome. Yeah, let's dive into this green box. That's Aukri's architecture. So Aukri is Kubernetes native. It's made completely of Kubernetes components. The first of which we saw earlier is Aukri's configuration. And that's where you tell Aukri what you want to find. And you do that by specifying what discovery handler you want to use to discover devices. So this could be Onvif, like we saw earlier for IP cameras, UDEV for local devices such as GPU, or it could be OPC UA for industrial machinery, or it could be your own custom discovery handler. And we'll talk a little bit more about the development life cycle of creating your own discovery handler later. Also in this configuration, you specify what custom workload, if any, you want deployed automatically to discover devices. We call this our broker. So once you apply your configuration to the cluster, the Aukri agent will see it, and it will tell that discovery handler to start looking across the network or locally on the node for those devices. For every device that discovery handler discovers, the agent will expose it to the cluster using the device plugin framework and also create our second custom resource, the Aukri instance to represent it and its usage. The controller will then see this instance and if a broker pod was specified, it will automatically deploy this broker to the discovered device and inject in it as environment variables all the information it needs to connect to that specific device. So for example, if these were IP cameras we're discovering, maybe that would be an RTSP URL for the specific device. Let's look at the flow of how you could use Aukri. And in this case, say we have some custom application that wants to utilize the frames from IP cameras that are around the cluster. So the first thing you need is a Kubernetes cluster. So here we have one with a control plane and two worker nodes. And it has all the Kubernetes components already a part of it. So at this point, uh, we can go ahead and deploy our custom application that's going to benefit from the work that Aukri is going to do. And we'll say that this custom application has been pre-configured to point to a service that will automatically be created by Aukri. Now we're ready to install Aukri. And Aukri can be installed using its Helm chart. It's just a simple Helm installation. So once you do that, uh, you see all of Aukri's components that we saw previously on our architecture slide pop up. So we have our controller running in the control plane and our Onvif discovery handler and agents running on each worker node. At this point, we can tell Aukri to start discovery by applying our configuration to the cluster. In this case, because we want to discover IP cameras, we're going to specify that we want to use the Onvif discovery handler. And since we do want workloads automatically deployed to the discovered devices, we're going to specify the image for our workload. And in this case, we'll say it's a frame server, uh, like we saw in our previous scenarios. So this workload will connect to a camera, grab frames from it, and serve those frames over some gRPC interface. The last thing to know about this configuration is this capacity setting. That's where you tell Aukri how many nodes can utilize a device at once. So here we're gonna say only one can deploy a broker to use this device at a single time. So once you've applied your configuration to the cluster, the Aukri agent will tell the Onvif discovery handler, hey, start looking across the network for these IP cameras. We don't see any IP cameras right here on this uh, slide. So let's go ahead and connect a camera. So this could have been done before deploying Aukri, but let's say that you do it now. So the, the discovery handler will see this camera and tell the agent, 
and the agents will um, create an instance to represent this camera. The controller then sees that instance and automatically deploys our broker pod to one of the nodes that could see this camera. It also automatically creates a service for all of the frames from all of the cameras. Um, and that's the one that the custom application was pre-configured to point to. So at this point, the application's doing the work it was intended to do. It's getting those camera frames and doing whatever it wanted to do. But what happens if this node were to go down? Well, since the other node said that it could also see this camera, the controller will notice that the node went down and automatically reschedule the broker so that once again, that camera is being utilized. However, there was a little bit of downtime. So in order to create a more highly available scenario, you could have set that capacity number to two when deploying the configuration. And then from the start, the controller would have deployed a broker pod to each one of these worker nodes. So that if the node went down, there was no lag and downtime for this custom application. All of that flow that we just saw could have been initiated with one Helm installation. So you'll see here, um, you can install just Helm's controller, agent, and discovery handlers. And separately, you can uh, create your configuration YAML and use kubectl to apply it to your cluster. Or you can do that all in our um, using our Helm template and Helm installation. Let's look at one of Aukri's latest enhancements, and that is Aukri's discovery handler model. So our discovery handlers do discovery. So they're, they're the ones that discover all the devices that are either embedded in your nodes of your cluster, attached to it, or around the nodes. And these can be protocol implementations like OnVIF um, or OPC way. Um, and it could even be your own proprietary protocol that discovers your own unique devices. Originally, these discovery handlers were embedded in the Aukri agent, which meant that if you wanted to um, extend Aukri to discover even more devices, you had to fork the agent and work within its code, uh, which is all Rust, to include your discovery handler. This was, also, um, this was clearly inhibiting, and we heard that feedback from the community. And now our discovery handlers live behind a gRPC interface, and we'll look a little bit more at that in detail in a second. Uh, what this means now is that these discovery handlers are deployed in their own pods and they can be implemented in any language and um, they're, they can easily be deployed using our Helm chart. So you can just specify the image for your discovery handler um, and they'll automatically be deployed in a daemon set fashion like our agents. So for the developers that may be watching this right now, let's go ahead and look at this discovery handler um, interface. So it consists of two services, the first of which is this registration service, and that's hosted by the Aukri agent. And that is the service where when a discovery handler comes online, it will register with the agent saying, hey, this is my name, this is where I live, and I discover shared devices such as IP cameras that are visible to multiple nodes or unshared devices such as local USB devices. And the name that a discovery handler registers with is the name that you specify in your configuration. So when you specify you want to use that discovery handler, when you apply the configuration, the agent will say, oh, that's the discovery handler that I need to ask to do discovery. And it will pass the discovery details that are also set in that configuration to that discovery handler when it calls discover on it. We previously abstracted away these details in our previous slides, but discovery details are how you tell a discovery handler what subset of devices you want to discover. So for UDEV, we don't want to discover all the devices in the Linux device file system. So the UDEV discovery handler allows you to specify a UDEV rule for filtering. In this case, we want to discover only video devices. Let's review um, all of Aukri's functionality that we've talked about so far. So Aukri is a Kubernetes resource interface. And just like container network interface abstracts away the networking details from a Kubernetes operator, Aukri aims to abstract away um, all the details of finding and utilizing IoT devices and aims to be a standard way to connect these IoT devices to your Kubernetes clusters. It can handle devices coming and going. So when devices appear, it'll create resources to represent these devices. When they go away, it'll remove that Kubernetes resource that represents that device. And it can enable a plug and play scenario so that when devices are discovered, Aukri can automatically deploy workloads to utilize them. And it also makes it so that multiple nodes can utilize the same device at once, allowing these devices to be shared using that capacity setting that we discussed earlier. It can automatically deploy services for you that point to specific devices or all devices of the same type or configuration. 
and we currently support um, well, several discovery handlers that we've discussed so far, and we have community contributions underway for um, zero comp discovery for MDNS based devices and co op discovery for devices in constrained environments. But as we saw earlier, we really are trying to make our discovery handler model as extensible as possible so that community members can easily add more and we can continue to discover even more um, devices. Another way that Aukri is extensible is via its broker pods. So you can specify any image for the workload that you want to automatically be deployed to discover devices. And one way that we see broker pods being used is as protocol translation gateways. So maybe you have Aukri discover some USB video cameras and your broker pod will automatically translate that USB camera into being an IP camera. So what's next for Aukri? Um, more discovery handlers. Uh, the more that Aukri can discover, the more powerful a solution Kubernetes will be on the edge. We also want uh, to support more deployment strategies. So currently, Aukri has a microservice approach to utilizing these IoT devices it, it, it discovers, and we'd like to have multiple approaches there. And finally, and most importantly, we want to grow our community. Um, Aukri open sourced only in October of last year. We're still very young. And we're really excited to look to the community for direction and see where Acri is most powerful. If you find Acri interesting, uh, you can come and deploy our end-to-end -end demo for yourself and try it out. Uh, you can also learn more about Acri by visiting our documentation. Uh, everything we talked about there today and much more is described in our docs. We are available, you know, if you, if you encounter any issues, please let us know on GitHub or you can talk to us on uh, Kubernetes Slack Acri channel. We are always available there for any thoughts, feedback, or help with any issues. We are always open to proposals as well. So if you find something that you think Acri should do for everybody or even just for yourself, please let us know, send us a proposal. Uh, we are open to contributions. Uh, if you want to contribute, that would be great. Otherwise, you can also come meet us at our community meetings. We have a once a month community meetings on Zoom uh, where we can discuss uh, other ideas that you might have. Thank you all for the time. Uh, we will be here for a little while longer for those of you watching live to answer any questions. Otherwise, like I said, feel free to reach out to us on any other channels. And I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.